Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's Islandora webinar. Before we get started again, I'll ask everyone to mute their microphones so that we can reduce the amount of background noise during the session. This month, we are pleased to present a discussion with Chuck Shabat, who will highlight the U.S. National Agricultural Library. Discovery Garden provided support to the project beginning in 2013. Since then, Discovery Garden and the staff from the National Agricultural Library have designed and built new enhancements for Islandora and collaborated on configurations to optimize the performance of the repository. As you've heard, I want to let you all know that we are going to be recording this webinar and I'll send out a link to access the new information later on today. So just a quick introduction on myself. My name is Adam Smith and I'm a sales and marketing associate here with Discovery Garden. I joined the team in 2015 and have quickly become immersed in a broad range of Islandora projects. I may have dealt with many of you online here today, but uh, for those who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I look forward to doing so again in the near future. And just a reminder, if we could all mute our microphones uh, so that everybody can. So for today's webinar, we're going to start with a quick overview of Islandora and Discovery Garden, which will lead into the introduction of our guest speaker and then to the presentation featuring the U.S. National Agricultural Library. Following the I'll open the floor to any questions that you may have for Chuck regarding his presentation. As your mics will be muted, I'll ask that you type your questions in the chat window and I'll gladly read them out during the Q&A session afterwards. So with that, let's begin. So as I mentioned, let's start by talking a little bit about the island, about Islandora for anyone who might be new to the community. The Islandora open source technology stack consists of three core components, that is Drupal, Apache Solar, and Fedora Commons. The stack also includes a lot of utility components and dependencies as well. Islandora is a very large open source software stack and it includes many applications. So in essence, the developers of Islandora and the community that supports it are experts at integrating third-party tools into Islandora. So let's talk a little bit about the core components individually, and we'll start with Drupal. Many of you are familiar with Drupal, as it is a leading open source content management system with over 30,000 user contributed modules from almost 100,000 active community members or developers. As we all know, active community members are vital to any open source project, and the same can be said for Drupal. People are invested in Drupal, and that leads to ongoing development and ultimately success. So Drupal serves as the presentation layer within Islandora. It's how we create a website and expose it to the internet. We also use Drupal for collaboration. It has a great framework for users, roles, and permissions, and we use that workflow for workflow activities, and it really does a it really does integrate in with a lot of other functionality within Islandora as well. So Islandora, in essence, is a suite of Drupal modules that allow us to build repositories on top of Fedora Commons. These modules make it possible to build, populate, and configure a digital repository without the aid of a developer. So next up, we have Apache Solar. Apache Solar is used for discovery within Islandora. Solar is very powerful, flexible, and configurable and it's used on some of the most heavily trafficked websites and applications worldwide. Some key features of Apache Solar include full text search capability, search fastening and filtering, uh, it's highly scalable and fault tolerant, and it provides near real-time indexing. For example, if we ingest an object into Islandora, it's going to be indexed within Solar almost immediately and will become searchable probably within 30 seconds after ingest. So the final core component is Fedora Commons. And this is the layer that stores and preserves all of our digital content. Fedora Commons is purpose-built for data preservation and long-term accessibility. And some key features of Fedora include auditing and fixity checks, RDF XML support. Um, we're able to scale Fedora Commons to millions of objects. It has support for virtually any file type. And it's built for interoperability. That means that we can export or migrate your data in a format so that it can be stored elsewhere should you require that. So as mentioned, those three core components make up the open source technology framework. And we like to call it a framework as it really is an integration of components working together. Organizations all over the world are using the Islandor framework to build their repositories. Some of these instances are customized in order to meet specific needs, 
and some are not customized as Islandor software is very usable straight out of the box. Uh, people are scaling these repositories into the millions of objects and they continue to have these large repositories perform very well. It helps to create fast, usable sites that are meeting customers' expectations. So now let's move on to a very quick overview of how Discovery Garden fits into the picture. Discovery Garden is a service provider of Islandora. We work to remove barriers to using the open source technology. Uh, we launched in 2010 and we're partnering the Islandora Foundation, which is the nonprofit entity that fosters the Islandora code. And since we've, since we've launched, we've contributed to over 90% of the Islandora code base, which we've written here at Discovery Garden on behalf of our many customers. We, we offer a lot of services that, re that relate to an Islandora repository. And a complete list of our services can be found on our website. And we'll include a link to that page in our follow-up package that I mentioned I'll be sending out later on today. So one of the biggest philosophies that we live by, and one that continues to be more and more recognized by organizations all around the world, is that in our view, it's really worth it to invest in people and ideas instead of software licenses. And we're very happy that our clients recognize that we are invested in Islandora, in the open source community, and that we are working each day to enhance the product. Okay, so now on to the reason that many of you have joined today. It is my pleasure to introduce Chuck Shoppet, IT Specialist with the United States Department of Agriculture, National Agricultural Library. Chuck is here today to give us an overview of the National Agricultural Library and discuss their Islandora project. So without further ado, I'd like to pass things over to Chuck. Welcome, Chuck. Hello. Yes, this is Chuck Shop, and I'm the technical lead for our <coughs> metadata unit. Uh, next. Uh, they say a little bit about who we are. Uh, we're one of the largest uh, institutions of agricultural knowledge. And currently, in the past decade, we've been making a transition from being more a print-based library to a digital. And basically, where we fit in, we're one of the four national libraries of the United States with the library of medicine, transportation, and education, plus the Library of Congress. Our library was created by Abraham Lincoln around 1862. We are also the creator and maintainer of Agricola, which stands for Agricultural Online Resources. Uh, next. Uh, Agricola <coughs> is the world's largest um, bibliographic database of agricultural knowledge, currently co carrying over 5 million records. We basically have Agricola divided up into two databases, our article citation database, which is for journal articles, book chapters, proceedings, etc. This is about three quarters of the Agricola database. The other half is our card catalog, which is our index of our print and digital collections. It's made up of mark-based bibliographic records and holdings for books, audiovisuals, materials and other types of materials. Our collection goes back to the 15th century. Uh, next. With uh, moving to uh, a digital library, one of our challenges is, was a new project called PubAg, which is a search engine for public access to citations for peer-reviewed journal, agricultural journal articles with full access to with access to the article's full text. This called for a major change in the way we produced Agricola article citations. One of the, some of the major changes we had was we had to increase our production up to 3,000, I mean 30,000 articles per month with uh, less staff. We also brought a new system to do automatic indexing of our articles. No more human humans reading articles and adding subject terms. We also transitioned, needed to transition from Mark 21 to a more flexible uh, metadata format mods, which is also more friendly to machines. Uh, next. 
After reviewing a number of RLSs and content management systems, we discovered Island Or. It was a good match for NAL. We already used Drupal for <coughs> our main uh, websites, and we also were starting to use uh, Fedora Commons for our digital collections. One of the key features that stuck out for us in choosing Islandor was Islandor's XML form builder, which allowed us to create custom forms and validation within the forms. Another reason for using Islandor and Fedora Commons was its flexibility, the uh, active community, and being a m mature platform for building our repository. Being a small IT shop, we need to help launching this project, a project of this size, and we chose Island Or for their expertise in uh, their knowledge of the software stack, and they helped us to increase both the performance and scale it out to handle over 5 million records. Also, their ability to enhance the Island Or uh, modules and create new ones for us, and also their willingness to share their technolo knowledge and technolo knowledge of the Island Door stack. Uh, next. Here's a high-level outline of how we're using Island Door. We use it primarily as a back office uh, system to handle our productions. In this uh, system, we basically receive articles through main, three main sources, uh, keyed by our staff, Publishers supply um, metadata to us, and we also receive metadata from our USDA scientist. For publisher data, we unpack it, convert it from their proprietary formats into mods. We also do a matching against the Fedora Commons database, I mean repository, and then ingest it in, into uh, Fedora using our, our own Perl uh, programs. After the objects are ingested, we run it through uh, a Luxid automatic indexing platform. And finally, what we do is mark each, once they've been indexed, we finally mark them for our various products. Our public display is handled through uh, custom systems. We do all our, we only use Islandor right now for back office processing. Uh, next. Uh, some of the highlights of Narador. Like most institutions that have enhancements to, to Island Door, we have our own door, which is Narador. And here's some of the features that we had built for, built by DGI for us. One of the big ones is our uh, staff uh, journal article citation workflow. This workflow provides forms and displays for staff to complete a journal issue, entering each one of the op, uh, articles within that issue. It allows staff to complete a journal's issue without retyping any of the uh, repeatable fields by auto-populating from the first article. This give, Also, it provides uh, manager control over which Unicode characters will be accepted in the record. So if they're doing a cut and paste, it will, to create an abstract, it will filter out and block certain illegal and undesirable Unicode characters. It also, they also provided us with a wide range of reports and displays to aid our staff in accurately tracking articles through the system, as well as uh, which records have been, which articles have been keyed in which uh, journals and issues. Another uh, workflow that DJI created for us is the quality control workflow, which is based on the Island Door bookmark module. The, this module allowed, allows uh, managers and automated programs to assign staff to review articles before they're provided to automated indexing. It also provides displays to notify staff of new records assigned to them for review or correction. 
another feature is an auto populate feature to create the mods from external uh databases such as our proprietary our own uh mark logic based databases PubMed, FrostRef by DOI. We also have a wide range of displays and reports that support both the Narador workflows as well as our automated indexing workflows. Uh, next. Uh, we were doing well you know, in the first uh, couple of years of production, but as we uh, grew, we ran into problems where our automated index, automatic processes were overloading the solar queue. We were currently in a major migration bringing up, bringing in 4 million records from IRS. One of the features we rely on for our article citation workflow is the first article to be in solar before the second one could be auto-populated from that first article. And with us loading hundreds, with hundred, loading 100,000 records into repository, we backed up the um, ActiveMQ that, um, for G-Search. Uh, basically, we brought this, uh, asked uh, DGI for help with this solution, with this problem, and uh, next, uh, they created the uh, Islandor uh, G-Searcher module. This uh, module allows records to be created within Islandor to go to the head of the line to be indexed by Solar. It removed the need for ActiveMQ between Fedora Commons and G-Search for adding records to the Solar Index. It greatly re reduced the workload and sped up G workload on G-Search and Solar, as well as speeding it up. At NEL, this allowed our staff to finish their work much faster and take less coffee breaks. Uh, next. And any questions? Okay, thank you, Chuck, for that excellent and informative presentation. Um, the team here at Discovery Garden is certainly very proud of being part of such a really great, magnificent project, and we're very happy that it's been so successful and continues to be as well. And like Chuck mentioned, with that, we'd like to open the floor to any questions. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, if you would please type your questions in the chat window. I'll, go, I'll badly read them out loud. And again, that'll just cut down on the uh, background noise. And to start things off, Chuck, I have one for you. Um, we have a lot of times the government is usually very hesitant to implement open source technology. Um, were there any re was there any resistance to implementing Islandora? And if so, how did you overcome that? Uh, there was some. We wanted to, they were worried basically about having the support in for the software to go away. A lot of times, We've had soft, seen uh, open source pack, uh, products begin strong and then drop off on their being supported by the community. But one of the arguments we made was how strong the Islandor community was and the backing of of Discovery Gardens. Yes, for sure. We're seeing a lot of that with a lot of different clients we speak to that the, the community support is very important to them. and. And to have that is is instrumental in a lot of these implementations for sure. So again, if you have a question that you'd like to ask, please type it in the chat window. Okay, well that looks like it's it for questions today. Um, on behalf of myself and uh, everyone else at Discovery, oh sorry, there is a question that came in. Um, what proportion of materials are staff entered? It's we really enter about a thousand uh, articles a month by uh, staff input. Thousand articles a month, okay. How large will the repo grow? Uh, we're hoping to get up to about 
10,000 uh, objects. Our objects are tending to be on this relatively small size. We do have some uh, full text PDF documents attached to it. We're also bringing in some, we do have some full collections in the system, but we're looking about uh, 10 million objects. Okay, if there's no more questions, uh, again, as I was saying, <coughs> excuse me, uh, on behalf of myself and everybody at Discovery Garden, I want to thank Chuck for giving us his time today. Um, we know he's busy, and uh, it was a very entertaining and uh, informative presentation for sure. And so on behalf of myself and everyone else at Discovery Garden, I want to thank you for attending today's webinar. Goodbye. Thank you.